noche. Se me cayó el lápiz, baby, quiero que te agache. Si le jalo el pelo, no importa si estoy muy guache. Ella solo disfruta de mi pH. Mi baby, baby honey, ella quiere sexo, no quiere money. Pa' allá la vida es un rolling, haciendo el amor por hobby. Hoyo tiene cara enfermo, si hijo de puta tiene COVID. Y yo soy eterno como COVID. Tú estás en mi penthouse y ellas están en el lobby. Aquí no te joden, si tú juegas quedan en game over. Si me vio en tu casa, soy amigo de tu brother. Y dile que aquí somos cantantes, que no hacemos covers. Are we ready? Jason, why are you here? Redemption. I came to the Academy in 2017 when I was 16 years old. I chose another path and it didn't work out for me, so I'm back a second time to make it work. I feel like everyone knows what it takes, but it's the ones who actually do it to the detail. Those are the ones who will make it to the top, who actually dedicate their lives and just the sacrifice it takes to make it. else football is my identity like since I was a kid till now it's the one thing that's been consistent in my life and I feel like it brings everything else together my friends my brothers my family my life in the US my life in Ghana and now my life in Spain trials at Cadiz and especially Mallorca I can see the level that they play at and I can get a sense of what it takes to play at that level Football, it means a lot. It means freedom, it means escape, it means love on and off the field, it means, um, it means the will to keep going and to keep driving. I'm Jacob Thompson from Brighton, England. I'm Cameron Williams from San Diego, California. My name's Angel Ariola, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Kobe Osei in the United States and God. Hello, I'm Mario Abumitri from Beirut, Lebanon. This is FC Malaga City. Hi guys, it's uh, awesome to finally welcome everyone, okay? You know, I do apologize first of all to to the families that couldn't be here from the, the planned presentation on, on September the 1st, but hopefully, you know, with the, with the stream, everyone can, uh, can catch up with information that we got tonight. But, um, so I'm George James, I'm the founder of FC Malaga City. Um, obviously, I've met a lot of players already. I'm really excited to, to meet everyone over the coming months as we, as we get into the, into the good part. Um, we've done the hardest bit, which was 
making a massive decision to, to alter your life, to alter your family's lives and move to another country. Lots of you in another time zone, another continent. Um, you know, you probably had a few days that feel quite tough. I'd say that's normal. Um, it's about now getting into it and, and enjoying it, you know. So we've got a lot of important information to get through. We're not going to try and bore you and have you sat here for hours, you know. So I'm going to be with James Dawes. Um, you know, he's still hanging around here. We're going to give it another go last year after the presentation that was a little bit improvised. So hopefully we can do better this year. Um, and I'll, I'll hand it straight over to James. So hi, guys. Um, you know, looking back at the video that we made sort of, you know, almost six months ago now, um, and seeing some of the faces, you know, Cameron, Angel, Jacob, players that have had such a massive effect on this football club, especially in the last couple of years. And the exciting thing about me as we approach a new season is that every year there's more players in this audience today that will go on also to have a positive impact for this, uh, for this football club. So, first of all, welcome. You know, like George says, it's a new environment, it's a new country. For many of you, it's the first time being away from home. Um, but with it, you know, with uh, adversity and challenges always brings out the best in people. So very excited to see what this year brings. Um, you know, fortunate myself to be here for another year. So thanks, George, for inviting me back for another year. And, um, and yeah, one thing that we always say, you know, uh, above all else, when people ask us what's different about this place, uh, it's the people. It's the people sat in the front rows there from the staff that set the standard, that put in the foundations there that, you know, want you to be successful. And then in, as we go you know, further back, the players that uh, make this place what it is, you're the ones that, that reap the benefits of that and hopefully we'll go on to, to take this opportunity to the next level. So big welcome today. And like George says, we'll go over some important information, introduce you to some of the faces that you've maybe seen around. Um, and yeah, get the season going. So the first place we're going to start, obviously, is the coaching staff. So as I mentioned to you, over the last couple of days, you've probably seen a lot of these guys around. Um, but we want to put some names to faces and, and so on. So starting at the top there, you've got Adrian Dominguez, who's been with George Wright since the very beginning, okay? He's a fundamental part of what we've done here over the years and um, a fantastic example for the rest of the coaches. Obviously, Samuel Linares, nice picture there with a trophy, winning, uh, winning the league last year with Sidi Amineke City. Uh, you've also got Juan Mabuyes. Uh, Sorry if I butchered your name there, Fama. <laughs> Alvaro, Juan Carlos, uh, Billy and Rafa, who, who will you know, make up the majority of the coaching staff there. So, George, anything to say on any of these guys? You know, I think um, the only thing I'll say, you, you've got hugely prepared people here. Um, and, and on the whole, you've got young coaches, okay? You know, so we're trying to give um, young players an opportunity. But you can see through to the coaching staff, okay? You know, Sam has not even turned 30 yet, and he's, you know, coaching one of our, one of our senior teams and doing a, doing a fantastic job. You know, Adrian Dominguez, one of the youngest UEFA Pro licensed coaches um, in Spain. You know, that was 10 years ago now. He's unfortunately not quite so young anymore. Um, but, you know, to be a Tessera division coach, you know, before you're 35 years old, there won't be any other coaches in the league that young, you know. So we're backing um, young football players, but also young coaches as well, and just trying to give people a platform an opportunity to, to be the best version of themselves that they can be. Absolutely. So I think the first person, you know, if you know, anybody knows this football club as, as well as George and, and Adrian, it's Alvaro. So Alvaro, if you wouldn't mind coming up and, uh, and saying a few words, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> There's no subtitles, so give him a chance. Okay, so <laughs> I am, I'm Alvaro, and like uh, all the coaches uh, know me, okay, but um, uh, most of the players also uh, know me, and I'm in contact uh, with them from, from Thursday. So basically, <coughs> I want to, to express um, how proud I feel uh, because I started from the beginning of this project when we was uh, maybe 18 players. Um, we have no teams competing in the leagues. Um, uh, we was in a town very small with the facilities not very good. Um, also, I work in most of the places that we can do. I started uh, mm, doing uh, the photography, uh, media, uh, taxi driver, some help for the, 
for like uh, in the houses if something uh, wrong happen I will be there uh, not only me I know that all the coaches sometimes in the beginning also did that it work and uh, now I feel so proud because I'm in one of the top uh, uh, sit, uh, situation or place in the academy I'm uh, coordinate all the coaches and I feel very happy po for it and also I'm very nervous <laughs> and what I want to show <coughs> uh, for all the coaches and all the players is that uh, we are here uh, to improve as a player and also as a person uh, if we have no good values uh, in the life uh, you never can give a good level uh, in the football professional part and uh, that is what I try to show every day for for the boy for the coaches for everyone that with work uh, we can arrive where um, where we want to arrive so uh, that's it for me uh, welcome for everyone and, and thanks to believe in FC Malaga City and now is our turn to try uh, give you everything that you are uh, in the expectation no? uh, okay so thank you Thank you, Alvaro. So, guys, for the, for the ones that I talked to before coming here, one thing I always say is, um, you know, you take these, these coaches that you have up here from your UEFA Pro licensed coaches, you know, uh, coaches that have, you know, coached at the professional level, coaches that have played at the professional level, and one thing I always say is make the most of that, okay? So never be afraid to ask questions. For a young player to be in that situation with coaches with this experience, make the most of it. So, uh, yeah, and then we're going to have a look at some of the other staff that also make up the coaching uh, teams starting off with Josemi there. Um, Josemi looks after uh, the goalkeeping here in terms of throughout the program, okay? So he's supported by uh, Will Smith in there, Alvaro Mata, uh, Javi works uh, in the majority in Estepona with the Feminino teams, okay? Um, moving past that, Paco and Shem, um, these guys, you know, part of the Division D and all winning side last season. Um, Shem's got a special story that we'd love to hear from, but I doubt we're going to get out of him today, you know, coming through the ranks from one of the youngest players here at 15, 16, uh, to now being a member of the, of the coaching staff. So, you know, for uh, um, a shining example there of the pathways, not only on the pitch, but off it as well. You know, Shem goes to show there through dedication and the right attitude and work ethic. You know, he's now in uh, a position at the, the apex of the club, really, on the coaching staff there, alongside, obviously, Adri, Paco and, uh, and Rafa. Ryan's been with us for a number of years, um, you know, worked on the, on the sports uh, science side and looks after a lot of that stuff for us, but also in the, in the coaching staff, you know, Ryan, I think, is one of the most approachable people at the club in terms of players, um, you know, talking to him with matters um, and whatnot. He's a great addition to the coaching staff. Obviously, Pepe, one of the newer members here, Diego also, and, and Paco going into his second season. So, Again, guys, the, the most important thing that you need to take away from this is that you are supported, okay? You have an infrastructure around you um, to where we want you to be successful, you know, not only on the pitch, but off it as well. I think, you know, James says, you know, about having the support, and that's probably a, a huge progression for us as a, as a football club, not just a football academy, okay? You know, so as Alvaro was sort of alluding to and talking, in the beginning, you know, we had a few football staff, um, you know, and we kind of had to be jacks of all trades. You know, we've now branched out from that, and we, we understand that if you're a happy player off the pitch, it's going to help with your performance on it, you know, and a huge investment from us and, um, and putting in systems and putting in people that can help you with things that you might need, okay? You know, so the first thing I'll say is a huge quality of us as a, a football club and a, and a group of, um, of staff is empathy, okay? We understand that it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be plain sailing over the, the next 10 month season, okay? Um, lots of you aren't speaking the language. Okay, the food's gonna be different. I've seen some of the messages, people have al already learned that the electric in Spain isn't quite as good as it is in maybe some other countries. The Wi-Fi can be problematic, okay? So it's a, it's a culture shock for lots of people um, and it's, it's a life challenge, okay? One that hopefully people will grab, they'll thrive in and you'll, you'll grow as a person, okay? But 
don't feel down on yourself. Don't feel alone. Um, and you've got a massive list of people on here who, are, who care and are here to help you every day, okay? Whether that's from the monitors um, who are helping in your, in your hotel just for a quick question, things like that. Guys that might be playing in some of our senior teams. Um, you know, through to having two um, full player liaison officers, okay? So you've got Irene, okay, and Nicola, who are based in the office. Um, anything you need, if you need uh, help knowing how to send a letter back home or a parcel um, when you're buying mum and dad uh, a Christmas present, um, if you need to know how to get a bus ticket on your day off to go to Granada, to Malaga, etc. Um, you've got people there that are dedicated to help you with all kind of troubleshooting, okay? And um, in, in the politest way, Use the people around you, know how to use different people, okay? You know, you've got your football coaches and they're gonna be there for absolutely anything that you need, okay? But I'd rather spend my time and their energy them teaching me, okay, how, how I can be a better player, asking them questions about my last game, asking them maybe how can I get more minutes, what could I improve on, what do you think I need to do to try and get an opportunity at a club, okay? Maybe it's best spent their time helping me with those kind of things, you know, rather than what time's dinner tomorrow, where can I wash my clothes, um, what's the code for the Wi-Fi, okay? You know, so go to the right people, for the right information that you're, you're looking for. Obviously, um, Alejandro's here as well. We've got um, sports psychology this year with Max, okay? So that's something new. They'll be coming in um, once a month to do joint classes with teams at a time, okay? It's, it's something that we felt is crucial in modern football and that's gonna help players um, find those extra one, two percents that they need that might help their game, help them become a starting player, help them um, you know, score more goals, whatever it might be, okay? Um, and as well as that, they're available for, for individual sessions, okay? So we'll get you more information on that as we, as we get going. They did come down, okay, from, from Madrid. So it's a company based in Madrid. They came down for the, the initial presentation. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here, couldn't be here today, okay? Um, we've got Ivan Para, Alberto, and Sergi. So they're our logistics managers, okay? So you probably would have had a lot of contact with them over the last couple of days, getting you settled into your room, things like that, you know? So again, Anything goes wrong in your residences, um, anything that you need with your, your accommodation or not happy stuff that can be changed, um, you know, please, um, you'll get their contacts. I believe it's in the, in the brochures that should have been left in your room. Um, go straight to them and they're there to, to help you, okay? So as you'll be heading up, the guys checking on the curfews. Um, it's a really important part of what we feel we need to improve on as a club, okay? You know, people should be here and you should be here for football, okay? And if you're here for a party, here to be out till all hours of the morning, then, then you're kidding yourself and also, more importantly, your families about what your dreams and aspirations are, okay? You know, so this year, we do have a very stringent control. Um, you know, you have your set times when you need to be in and we'll have people working through the night to make sure your safety is first and foremost. You know, for us, that's, that's vital. Um, while we're here to try and help you be a better athlete, I don't wanna have to have a phone call of anyone's parents, being a dad myself, that something, heaven forbid, has gone wrong in the evening, okay, when someone was where they, they shouldn't be, okay? Um, obviously, see at the top alongside myself, Amelia, okay, so our club president. Um, I think she's too shy to come up and, and talk today, but she does talk a lot. So if you need anything, um, maybe not comfortable talking to your coaches about, um, any kind of general support, you know, a fantastic person within our club that gives countless hours and is and always approachable with whatever you need. She's mostly in the office. Um, and again, just reiterating what James said, please not hesitate to, to reach out to any of the people on the, on the board and, and make the most of the network that you have within yourself just in and around the academy. So introductions out of the way, guys. I think this is one of the most you know, fundamental uh, parts of today. You know, it's getting to know what FCMC is all about from you know, um, a front side view, okay? So we have a very clear DNA here that runs throughout the club, okay? Uh, starting with your arrival. So for many of you, like I said, you've never been away from home for the first time. You're settling into your accommodation, you're making new friends. And this first week or so is gonna take some adjustment, okay? And we're obviously aware of that. Um, the expectations in the first week from a performance aspect, um, you know, from the coaches are obviously tailored to counter that, you know, to account for, for all these new things that are coming your way, okay? Um, the next step or the next phase of the development is then the introduction. So you're getting used to a full-time training schedule for those that you're coming from clubs you may be training two, three times a week. Even those that you were training full-time, you know, it's a new intensity, it's a new level, it's a new professional environment that you're in and for many that will take time to, um, to get up to speed with, okay? So the coaches do a great job of introducing that. Um, especially in the first month, you spend a lot of time on the training ground, you know, introducing club method methodology, which you'll see run through our youngest age groups right through to our senior teams, okay? 
Uh, and also values. I think one thing that we're, we're massive on here is values, okay? And that is the way we carry ourselves as players, as coaches, as people, you know, um, far off the pitch as well. That's going into your day-to-day -day life. Uh, that's going on the way you conduct yourself around town. Um, and then obviously you see the results of that on the pitch. The adaptation phase, okay? That's then taking these uh, newfound um, principles, okay? Um, and trying to match them, okay, with, with good habits, uh, whether that's eating, whether that's sleeping, whether that's prehab and taking care of your body. What, what you'll soon find out is um, that it's not enough just to be there at training, okay, for an hour and a half every day or however long the training is and be present for that long. Those that go on to um, have success, and we've got a slide that shows the amount of players that, that have gone on to opportunities from here, um, like George said, take those 1% that they're given and really put them into action, okay? So it's adapting your daily lifestyle to the man, uh, demands of a full-time footballer here in Europe. The development stage, it's then once you've got a grasp on this, the technical, tactical, the technical, you know, the physical aspects of the game that you're then um, introduced to, um, and using that and implementing it in your daily training schedule, trying to take those to the next level and implement them into your game and consistency. I think consistency is one of the most uh, important factors in terms of a player's development um, and also how far they go. It's how many days uh, can you turn up and be at your optimum level, okay? It's a long, long season here in Europe over the course of the 10 months. And for those that can harness that same mentality, that same attitude, that same work ethic throughout that 10, 10 months, you know, are the ones that, again, do the best. Um, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and then when you get into the delivery aspects, okay, the delivery is um, the, the end product. It's where you want to get to. It's putting these things into practice. You guys are going to get here a high level of competition, okay, to then go out and show what you've learned uh, and show how far you can take that. For the academy boys, getting the opportunity to come up against some of the clubs that you'll get the opportunity to play against, for you is a real, real test, okay. For many of you coming into this environment as the best players in your team, the best players in your region, the best players in your area, whatever the case may be, and now you're amongst other players who are also the best players in their team, region, area, etc. Um, so again, it's testing yourself on a day-to-day -day basis internally against um, you know, your teammates and trying to be the best in the group and lead by example, and then taking that one step further when you're given the opportunity in the platform, can you deliver on the big stage? Really great info from, from James, okay? And the, the main one I'd say on there is, um, for a lot of people from the competition you're coming from, this season is gonna feel very long, okay? Whether you're in one of our senior teams, one of the academy teams, okay, you know, especially if you're coming from you know, North America, you know, there's a lot of short high school seasons, university seasons. If you're coming from Australia, again, you know, you're only looking at sort of a five, six month season a lot of the time. Um, and things change dramatically from the start of the season to the end, okay? And um, as difficult as it feels having you know, maybe getting over jet lag at the moment, um, getting used to new surroundings, new friends, being nervous, etc. Uh, I guarantee you that this is the easiest period, okay? At the minute, you know, there's no pressure from coaches. It's all about enjoying it. It's about getting used to, to your new environment. The sunshine and the beaches are full and there's lots going on, okay? When it comes around to winter and there's not quite as much sun, we are very fortunate to still get very nice weather, but okay, you're not putting on suntan lotion and, and swimming shorts all day. That's when you start finding out who's really here for football, okay, and who can carry on performing for such a long period of time, okay? Who can demand from themselves um, to try and keep their optimum level and the high performance, okay? Looking at lots of the pillars that we, we've got here, okay? You know, for me, the two biggest ones, um, and they also link together, okay, is how can you adjust your body, okay, and adjust your performance physical-wise, okay, because that can be the difference now from going to a, a third-tier team to a, to a top-tier level, okay, and that goes hand-in-hand hand with, your, with your lifestyle, okay. If you're not living right off the pitch, you've got no chance to do well on the pitch, okay. Um, uh, we used to have a coach, a huge thing we talk about is a 24-7 is a athlete. James has already touched on it, okay. You're here with your coaches. They get, you know, from two to four hours contact time with you a day. What are you doing for the other 20? Okay, that depends on you, okay? Alvaro can't follow around the U19 group, tuck you into bed at night and make sure everyone's living well, okay? Whether you stay up on social media, li looking at too many videos till one, two in the morning, that's your performance that's gonna be affected the next day, okay? You know, so for me, off of there, the rest will come naturally from your coaches, the technical work, you're training every day, okay? Your touch is gonna get better, you're gonna get confident on the ball. Um, tactically, you're gonna get maybe new ideas, and I'd say on that, have a, have a growth mindset. Okay, you might be getting taught a certain way to play where you're coming from, and you're getting new ideas from the coach and staff, okay? Take that on board. There'll be bits that you do like and bits that you don't like, okay? So I got told when I was in my playing career, 
every coach you have, you can learn something from, okay? You know, whether that's one or two things, whether that's 20 things, okay? But if you have a, a closed mindset, no, no, we always play 4-3-3. Three, three. They're asking me to play 4-2-3-1 or 4-4-2. Four, four, I don't play that, okay? You're straight away going to have a lot of difficulties progressing in football, okay? Um, and the mental side, okay? It's a massive part of football now, okay? How you deal with anxiety, okay? How you deal with disappointment, how you deal with frustration, because you're going to get loads of all of those things in abundance this season, okay? Frustrated when you don't get picked to go and play Barcelona, okay? The Tessera guys, they're going to be disappointed when they go away, maybe don't win the game that they should do, and there's a lot of pressure on, okay? Let's not forget now that from all the work we've done over the last decade, and especially over the last five years, the senior teams now, it's now time to go for real, you know? So I'm on Yekka City playing the highest level semi-pro leagues that you can in Division I or, okay? And our senior team, which we're all very excited, I hope lots of the young players are looking up to our Tessera team. You know, the badge you're wearing on your chest now is now competing at a national level, okay? Something we never would have been able to dream of, okay? But now it gets for real. Now we're playing against Malaga B, Almeria B. Next weekend, we start the season against Marbella, okay? Who were spending millions just a few short seasons ago. Okay, so now it's really time to, to stand up and see what Malaga City really means, okay? It's a, a massive step into the unknown for all of us and something that we, we can't wait to, to get started with. And I think uh, just on that, one, one thing, uh, you know, I had a hand in, in making the video that you saw at the beginning of the presentation, and one thing that Cameron says really stands out to me, it's everybody knows what it takes. Everybody knows that you should be eating well. Everybody knows that you should be doing extras. Everybody knows that you should be sleeping well, right? That's no well-held secret in the football industry. It's those that do it to the detail are the ones that see the rewards of that, and that really stuck out from the, the interviews with Cameron. And from the recruitment aspect, you know, I spoke with a lot of you in this room before you arrived here at, in Malaga City, um, and you all said the right things, you know. Um, and there's a there's a quote that I sort of always live by. It's a lot of people are in love with the idea of what it you know of being a professional fo uh, footballer more so than what it takes to be a professional footballer. Okay, and, and you're fortunate that you're in an environment here where you get to see you know what it takes and. Uh, and yeah, throughout the course of the season, the ones that do take that on board will, will accelerate and move on. And the ones that don't will, you know, go back with a fantastic experience after, after this year. So linking in again to what, what George said, uh, we're not going to go over these points here, but the mental aspect being such an important part in today, today's football, especially for you young uh, athletes that are out here uh, experiencing so much at, uh, in such a short space of time in terms of being away from home in terms of being in a new high-level environment uh, and so on. The one that sticks out to me on that board, guys, is, is ego, okay? Leave your egos at the door. Um, you know, Malaga City, like, like George says, it's a privilege to represent this club. Uh, you were picked here because we believe in you. We believe you're good enough. Um, we believe that you're capable of, of representing this club well and representing your sub, uh, yourselves well. But like I said, there's a lot of you that are going to be throughout the course of the season. It's going to be a bumpy road in terms of there's going to be coaching decisions that go against you. There's going to be results that go against you, maybe injuries, setbacks, and it's how you deal with these, okay? Um, everybody deserves the right to play here. Um, that's why you're here. Everybody deserves the right to play for Malaga City. But again, that doesn't mean that you're entitled to anything, right? Other than having that experience, being threat just as everybody else and, and so on. So egos are left at the door. Um, and the other thing is, you know, why we, we've seen so much success, and this is more so on the, on the senior level, is that team first mentality, you know? So many times we've been the underdog, so many times we go into these big games and we get positive results, and, and that's because we've got this mentality that the team or the badge is worth more than the name on the back of the shirt. And it sounds corny, um, but you know, when, when you've got a team of people that believe in each other, um, you know, you'd be amazed at what the results, you know, you can get from that. I think adding on to that one as well, transferring it into what the academy teams are, okay? Obviously every player in our academy, um, you know, we're playing, breathtaking, huge showcase games. Um, that's obvious, but we're not in a league table, okay? So maybe you can't judge a development in the same way that you can with Malaga City Tessera team, okay? If we're at the bottom, we're the worst in that league. If we're at the top, we're naturally the, the best. But I'd say the team first mentality is even bigger in those groups, okay? Because you'll come in here with individual goals, okay? You didn't come and, and join the academy to try and help your, your guys sat to left or right if you turn to a professional football player. Okay, that's fine. You know, we leave that, we get that elephant out of the room early. But at the same time, if we don't build teams with the under-17, under-18, under-19 groups, okay, we don't play as a collective, we can't compete when we go and play Valencia, okay? We can't compete when we go and play Cadiz, or when we travel to Paris, when we get invited to Benfica, okay? So you need to buy into that the team, while we're not competing in a league, the team is first and the team is the most important, okay? Because the stronger the team is as a whole, the more chance every single individual has to progress and get picked up, to get scouted, to have interest in the club, 
and hopefully get a training or trial opportunity organized at that team. And any interest we get, you know that the guys here will do everything to make those logistics happen and get that player the chance to go and go and train with as many clubs as, as possible. And the other one for me is just how I live my life personally, um, okay, is the lifestyle aspect, okay, where it says be obsessed with football, okay? And for me, there's two huge parts to Malaga City, okay? One is there'll be people that will come here, they'll thrive, this will be the exact environment they want. You know, they'll be watching the Premier League games, La Liga games, reading um, autobiographies on top players and, and things how to make themselves uh, a better player in their spare time, which doesn't need to be hitting the weights, doing more gym, etc. Okay, And there'll be players that will get footballed out. Okay, and that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you come to the realization at the end of a season at Malaga City that that's too much football, that's fantastic as well. We've done our job giving you a snapshot of what it looks to be inside a professional football club for a full season. Okay, because I can tell you there's guys here, you know, especially, you know, I've, I was very fortunate to play with, with Biru for a number of years at Herez. You know, he's 38 now, still wants to play every single day, wants to start pre season this year, finish playing for Malaga City. He can tell you 20 years as a footballer is a long time and it's a grind and it's tiring, okay? Your body doesn't feel good. Mentally, it's a, it's a stress, constantly being scrutinized, your performance and your level. And for some people, what you're about to experience, that will be too much football, okay? And that's fine, that allows you to think, okay, I'll go and study something. I'll go and do an apprenticeship. I'll go and do something different. I thought I loved football. Come back to what James said. I love the idea of being you know, an Instagram footballer, not doing the hard yards every single day, out on the training pitch, doing extras sacrificing, missing out on birthday parties, late nights, you know, maybe proms, graduations, etc. Um, you know, so they're the, the two main ones for me. So, again, that, that meets into your expectations, okay, what you can expect from, from this opportunity. And that's a question, obviously, both myself and George get asked quite frequently. And I say it's pretty simple, really. When you come into this environment, okay, your first priority is, as many of you experienced this week, is trying to secure a place in the top category team that you can, okay? Um, you all knew you were coming into an environment that's run professionally, which means, again, you have to earn the right to play in the highest category team possible, okay? So, first priority is establishing yourself in, in the highest category team. The next one is becoming one of the best, you know, challenging yourself to be one of the best in that team. You know, uh, me and George spoke about this a number of times last year. If this was Barcelona, right, and we were looking into the, to the, um, to the stands there at all the players in the academy, the realism is, even at a club of that magnitude, there's a very, very small portion of players that will ever make it to the professional level. So if, if, if that's the case at a club like Barcelona, you know, for us, it means that we have to work twice as hard. And if you're not one of the best players in, in the starting eleven, you know, you need to have a look and say, you know, uh, what can I be doing to get better? Or maybe, like, like I said, you need to manage your expectations against that. Climbing the club structure, we're fortunate here that we've got a uh, club structure that's very fluid, okay, meaning that players will get opportunities at several parts in the season to progress. And for those that aren't maintaining that levels, and like George says, treat it as a holiday, you will have people on your toes, uh, okay, that are wanting to take your place and, and never be kidded, you know, with that. Um, and I think that's one of the best things about this, this structure that we have is that, you know, nothing, nothing's given, everything's earned, okay? So that means if you are fortunate enough, I, I, um, you know, speaking with Mariano yesterday, went out for a coffee with him and he told me, you know, to play in the U18s last year was a privilege and those that didn't appre appreciate that privilege, you know, quickly found themselves in the, in the team below and that needs to be the case at every level in the club, right through to obviously the apex and the, the, the goal for everybody, like we've said there, is to, um, is to, you know, try and work yourself one day to be a part of that Tessera squad or the top club here at the uh, at FC Malaga City. Once you've done that, okay, or somewhere along that journey, if, you, if you're doing those things, if you're taking those steps, opportunities will present themselves, okay? We're fortunate to have people like Angel in the room, Cameron, uh, Jacob, you know, there's a, probably a bunch of people um, uh, more that I can't think of at the top of my head because I can't see anything. Uh, these are guys that, you know, started off in our academy teams, went on to opportunities, you know, trialed at um, professional clubs, you know, La Liga club in Mallorca and Angel this year. He's got that experience that he's seen that professional level and he knows that if he keeps working and keeps his standards, that one day he will achieve that, and that's part of it, okay? Um, and then, like I say, you know, we don't promise that you come here and we're gonna make you into a professional footballer, because at the end of the day, that's up to you. What we do promise that we'll, is that we will provide you with the tools you need to be successful, okay, in any capacity. There's some people in this room that will go into opportunities uh, at the collegiate level, go back to the US and earn scholarships. There's players that will push on to pro opportunities, there will players that return home and play at a very high level. And these are some of the tools that you need to be using at your, your disposal. So streaming and video of the games, we've got a fantastic camera crew at the back that's, that's videoing this event and will be at many of your games. Um, you know, live streaming the majority of them. Um, High-level coaching, we've mentioned the training schedule, the level of competition, the club structure. 
the media team that we have here, you know, providing you with a platform to really get noticed. Um, and you will find, guys, for those of you that have had tasters at the professional level, we're fortunate to have a structure that is better than most at the professional level, and that's a, a reality, okay? And then it's what you do from that platform to, to build on and help, you know, boost your career and your prospects moving forward. Uh, I think as well, you know, we talked about using the support network before and, um, and the staff you have at disposal, but don't take for granted the, the fantastic structure and tools that you do have as well in terms of the media, in terms of your own profile that you can build for yourself. You know, I know some of you are active, but I'm not sure how high level, how many people have LinkedIn profiles, for example, you know, at the minute, I know, I'm sure everyone's got a, uh, a Snapchat, everyone's got a TikTok, everyone's got an Instagram. Start thinking now to things like making yourself a more of a professional profile, okay? Floor's gonna make some fantastic photos, all online, available to be downloaded. You know, get some good ones. Start thinking about how your social media presence is as well. You know, do you need to be taking a stupid video or something to mess around with the guys, you know, or do you want to show what work you're getting up to, what kind of training you do, any good photos that you do? Again, it all helps to create the image and the profile that you need that is attractive to a football club, okay? You know, the first thing now, whenever even at our club, the second we get a player sent to us for the Tessera team, first thing we do is put their name into Google, search all of their social media accounts, okay? What kind of character are they? How do they conduct themselves? Are they gonna be a good ambassador for our football club? And are they the type of person with values that we wanna get involved here, okay? You know, so that'd be my biggest advice from, from all of the tools that you do have at your disposal. Use them wisely, okay? And, and go the extra yard with them, okay? And then don't say, oh, I haven't been picked up this year. I didn't get any trials. I didn't get any opportunities, okay? You've got live streaming. You can be sending maybe to college coaches, Coach, we're going to be playing next Tuesday at this time. Here's the link to it. Okay, be proactive. Help yourself. Okay, get on and get ahead to where you want to get to. So, just wrapping this this up, guys, and uh, in terms of this first part of the, the sort of the presentation, it's the controllables. Okay, there's a lot of things in football that you know we're not totally in your control, but things that you can control: attitude, presentation, in the way that you're turning up to training, in terms of the clothes that you're wearing, in terms of the way that you're conducting yourself, sleep, fitness levels. Grades is another one, um, and also attendance at Spanish class this year. This is something that we're really cracking down on um, because we believe here. The people that have the tools on the pitch should also translate that into the classroom, into attending Spanish class, into keeping your grades up. We work closely alongside uh, the high school programs that we have on offer here to make sure that you're being successful and we want to prepare you for all aspects of life, okay? The reality is for many that professional football will not be the case, okay? That's the harsh reality in life. Only 0, 0.0 whatever percent it is of players make it to that level and so you need to prepare yourself for, for life afterwards as well, even if you're fortunate. You know, George played professionally for a number of years um, you know, and he's, he's here today still working afterwards, didn't retire on a, a million dollar contract, you know, so um, mentality. Um, so there's a little quote at the bottom, success in anything will come down to two things, focus and effort. We can control both. And while we were speaking there about uh, mentality, about, um, you know, and the mental aspect of the game, I remember speaking with Charlie and anybody that's not met Charlie has just arrived recently. So make sure you go and introduce yourself. The guy is an absolutely absolute book of, of knowledge there. He's got some fantastic uh, experiences on the playing side. Uh, and I remember having a conversation with him once about Matridi, right? He played with Matridi at, at BSG and he was telling me, in training that guy was, was one of the worst players, you know? He wasn't the best technically, you know, wasn't the best in, in many aspects of the game, but had a very, very uh, uh, long and very successful career. Uh, and I'm sure if you speak with Charlie, a lot of that will be down to the controllables, he was always on time, he was always fit, he was always ready, uh, and he, you know, he's, a, he's a great example that sprung to mind about the people that sort of maintain that. Without us going too much into detail today, okay, and sound like taskmasters, I cannot emphasize enough with the, the point that it says about grades, okay? A lot of you guys, okay, you've not got European passports, okay? You're here at the academy and you enabled yourself to be here working with our partnership that we have in doing Spanish language, okay? Um, Things are getting strict all the time. Things are getting a lot more controlled all the time, okay? And we've changed partner this year with the, the school we're working with to get you guys the best tutors that we, we possibly can. The first point of view is that you're, you're, you're paying for the cost of that course, okay? And you're in a country where you can learn one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. You know, it's a fantastic life skill that people that aren't attending classes, okay? They're not helping themselves have a, an incredible um, attribute that's gonna help them for the rest of their lives, okay? The second one is, and we've had a really harsh reality of that this summer, Okay, everyone's looking at Adrian Dominguez and his Tessera team and how nice that would be to get called into that team, get invited back to our football club again. Okay, I can assure you now that we're not a professional football club, okay? So to get a, a visa here in Spain, you have to either be a, on a professional contract, which none of our players are at FC Malaga City senior team, 
okay? Or you have to be here studying, okay? Which through our partnership allows you to be a, a student athlete and, and spend a 10 month period here, okay? We've lost three of our best players from the Tessera team, and it's a true story. It's not trying to put the spooks up anybody, okay? Because you either have to pass the exam, okay? And be very good at Spanish, or you have to have a very minimum, a very minimum of 75% attendance, okay? Unfortunately, three of our best players were unable to do that last year. They didn't want to attend the course. We've now had to release them from the club as much as we want them here as a football player, okay? Because we can't register them with the, with the Spanish league system, okay? So please, do not underestimate. Any players that are not attending the Spanish course will not be able to be a part of our academy structure, okay? Because we won't be meeting the requirement for your paperwork and your student visa that enables you to be here in Spain. Yeah, so I always put this, you know, slide in the presentation whenever we do it because we can talk for as long as we want about, you know, if you do this, if you do that, you know, you'll see the rewards of it, right? Up until that, it's all words. These people on the board, you know, and this is a very limited number of players that are fortunate to have gone through our system and you can now find uh, playing professionally or at a very high level, uh, you know, throughout different parts. Not only here in Spain, you've got people up there that are playing Australia, Denmark, Mexico, um, England, um, just looking around the board, naming a few, there's, there's all sorts of, of different success stories and uh, if anything guys, they should be the inspiration, you know, me and George speaking up here, you know, it'll probably register with a few of you um, and I'm glad that, you know, a few of you will take, take this on board, but th these are guys you need to be looking up to, okay? Um, you're joining the club at a very privileged point, like, like George said, like Alvaro said, we started from nothing and we've worked our way up to a, st uh, a point where we've got over 50, I think, um, you know, over 50 players playing professionally around the world. Some on, you know, it's you know some huge club, internationals, players that have represented the countries. Uh, for a club, when George started this, I'm sure that was you know sort of out the realm of thinking, you know, to think that that would be the case. And we're certainly not done yet. Okay, there's more of you in this room that we hope will, you know, be on next year's presentation um, or will be on the presentations to come to say those guys took what we were telling them and put it into effect. Okay, so uh, so yeah. Nice cheesy quote for you, okay? Um, success is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. If you don't lo love it, guys, trust me, you won't make it because there's going to be times where you're going to have hard days, injuries, setbacks, everything that comes into the mix, and the one thing that gets it through uh, or gets you through those hard times is, is the love for the game. So. So 22-23 is, is going to be the biggest season yet. We said five years ago we wanted to be um, a Tessera club. We've done that. You know, now we're a Tessera club with a Premier League affiliate. Um, we're playing PSG and hosting them. We're close to confirming a trip to, to Lisbon to, to play Benfica, which I had the privilege to spend time there earlier this season. And I think, you know, now we can say, you know, we're a, a world leader um, in what we're doing, which is trying to help young people be better people with good values first of all, but also have the perfect platform and foundation to develop yourself as a, as a young athlete. People ask, what's the secret? You know, what do you guys do? You can talk about, you know, the, the tactics, the bibs, the balls, the cones, the facilities, all those things. And, um, you know, there's lots of clubs with that. For me, there, there's one single thing that this comes down to, and that is being completely relentless. Never taking no for an answer. Always believing in yourself, first of all, because I've always said, if you don't believe in yourself, how can someone else believe in you? And never, ever stopping in believing in these young people. You know, we're trying to really give them something that maybe other clubs haven't, and that's an opportunity and a chance. Every day is an interview. You know, I want to do the best that I can do, be the best version of myself for the maximum amount of time that I can be. For me, the most important is that we are a big family. We're all together, we live together, we do everything together, and I like that thing. It's like a, I don't know how to call it, but it's like, like, a, like a family. As a group, we couldn't be happier. We're wanting the 3rd of August preseason to start as, as soon as possible. 
Well, super, super excited because we have a lot of things coming on and a big surprise. If you think PSG is a big thing, <laughs> wait to see next season because there are way, way more things coming for the kids. The things that we're going to be able to provide uh, these young aspiring players in the future, for me, are going to make us unrivaled, you know, in, in, in what we're able to offer and, and the opportunity we're able to offer the, these young men. But ultimately, there's so much more to come and, and there's every reason to be excited about what we're doing here at, at Malaga City. Y, y para mí, el proyecto, el trabajo, la academia, para mí sería unión. I mean, watching that, you know, for someone that's been in, involved, um, you know, I, c I can't express how much pride you have in looking back on images like that and seeing, you know, what we've achieved with, with such, you know, a close-knit group of people. But, uh, you know, me and George have decided we probably spoke for, for a bit too long without letting someone else uh, jump in there. So I don't know if Cameron Williams is somewhere in the crowd. This is someone that uh, loves to speak on the big stage. Cameron, do you mind coming up and speaking? FC Malaga City poster boy. So we thought we'd get you on and uh, give us a few words. What does Tessera mean to someone that's been part of the back-to-back -back promotion? You know, um, I was literally just in your guys' position roughly three years ago. And to make it up the ranks from U19 to join in the Primera Andaluza year, to then promote to Division de Honor and then being there incredible, to then being now in Tessera is, is incredible. Like it's a feeling of hard work is now paying off and to do it with my boys, Neil, Jacob, and Angel, it's honestly like, it couldn't be a better feeling just doing it with the ones that you just, you join the club with. And um, I'm just grateful to be here, be a part of such an amazing coaching staff that really believes in young players and giving them a proper, proper chance and getting you to do what you wanna do for the rest of your life is, is honestly just a dream come true. So um, as long as you guys are here to put in the work and really dig deep through the good and bad times because it will happen. So really take everything you have here, not for granted. Yeah, don't do it for granted. <laughs> don't take it for granted because it is very important the time you have here because real chances will happen. It in, I took those chances as one by one. Always be, always be prepared for the unexpected because as that happens, you will find yourself mentally just getting you're growing you're growing you're growing and soon you will make it to the top i guarantee you that <laughs> best luck this season it's almost like he prepared for that <laughs> just a little snapshot back, back here, from where the academy started well. the main difference is is just the general infrastructure we now have three different squads the senior team which play in the Spanish league system and the goal there is simple to continue getting promoted every year and for me I, I want that that squad to get to Tessera which is the lowest professional league in Spain and I see that then as a, a trampoline into professional football that no one can provide anywhere and and that's the the dream of the, the club that's the mission statement yeah 
a little bit for you for you guys that have not, you know joined this year. That was said back in 2017, I think. And people laugh when we said that, you know, and here we are today. So um, yeah, no, it's the next five years now. No, I think you know, um, you guys sat here, you know, we're all enjoying watching, you know, all these beautiful scenes and and reminding ourselves of all the stuff we've been through with players old and new and, and guys that have been that journey with us. And, and really the only thing I'd say is, you know, the challenge is on for everyone sat here now for, for that standard not to drop um, and for us to keep the baton moving forwards. You know, we've worked so hard to, to get here and, and now it's your turn. You know, now it's your turn. Do we keep the team? Can we get past Tessera? You know, that's a question everyone's asking me and James is trying to put me on the spot a little bit there, which uh, uh, it's the question everyone keeps asking me at the moment is what's the next five years? You know, obviously I had a, a massive dream and um, started from founding the whole project in 2013. 2017, I said we wanted to have a Tessera club to help every player sat in this room, whether you're in that team, whether you're 14, 15 years old, just starting at the club, to have somewhere where you can get to a recognized professional level and, and showcase your talents, you know, and we'll always be a stepping stone club trying to help players move on to the highest level that they possibly can, whether that's playing in Sunaref, whether that's Segunda, whether that's back in their country, whether that's becoming international with your own nation, you know, and, and that's what we're here to do. And I believe that um, having a Tessera club will enable us to accelerate that development for a lot of people, you know. So now for me, is it's about getting partnerships, you know. So what I've worked tirelessly hard on the last 12 months is, is you know, traveling to London, working with, with Tottenham and, you know, obviously with the similar social media and things, we're delighted that we've been able to bring such a huge partnership to our to our football club and you know lots of us are sitting around the world you know football schools things like that you know or popping up here and there international academy um and all these kind of things you know whether that's in los angeles whether that's uh, you know psg doing camps in england whether that's um you know chelsea have a football school out here i think something like that you know that's not what we're going to look for you know we can we can go to the the club store and buy the kit and that'll be really pretty we wanted some some genuine content you know so when we had the chance to collaborate with tottenham um, and be able to tap into and, and learn about how they're working, one of the best clubs right now um, in terms of you know, their academy, obviously a thriving UEFA Champions League club as well. And, and our coaches are hungry, as hungry as you guys are to be better players, we want to be better football coaches, you know, and so what the, the Tottenham Partnership is going to give us is fantastic coach development, okay? You know, so they'll be coming here now on the 19th of this month to, to observe you guys, to take training sessions but they'll also be here to come and give coach education seminars to our staff, okay, and introduce themselves. What do Tottenham do, you know, because I'm not saying that they're, they're necessarily better than us, but they've obviously got a lot more resources than us, a lot more research than us, and a lot more modern trends, you know, so we want to learn what are they doing to help their players, and we can try and help all of you guys, okay. We'll see our staff, groups going at a time, four times during the season to visit Tottenham, okay, and see one of the best training centres in the, in the world, the investment they've made in the, in the training facilities. And then we'll also be going for two player trips, okay? So we can now go over groups of players and test ourselves against one of the biggest EPL clubs there is and obviously enjoy, for me, what was a breathtaking stadium when I had the pleasure to, to visit it, you know? And um, I'm not going to sit here and say that that now means that every player that does really well for Malaga City is going to sign at Tottenham, you know, because that's, that's most likely not going to happen, okay? But looking at an absolute star model, one of the, the industry leaders, how can that make us better, make our coaches better to help make you better, okay? You know, and hopefully if they want to loan us a few players um, along the way, that would be, uh, be a fantastic treat as well. So, yeah, so this is another area that we, uh, we've looked to improve this year in terms of not only on the field, but also the support network around it. I think mental health in general is one of the hottest topics in the world right now. I think it's one of the most important, uh, especially for young people growing up in today's sort of, social media society. Uh, we brought Max in, who's uh, first and foremost qualified, um, you know, at various points throughout the season. Uh, us as coaching staff, who are people that see you on a daily basis, you know, we'll try our best to offer you, a, you know, a safe place to, to speak to someone, to, to voice your concerns, um, and, and, you know, just generally be there as a support network for you, with a lot of you having families on the other side of the world and so on. Uh, but it's important that we're also doing our due diligence in bringing in qualified people who are capable of also taking that and providing you with professional advice and training and so on. Um, one thing I would say on this, this particular area, it's, uh, it's an area that touches me in particular, I would say it does, you don't have to be in a bad position or in a bad place to necessarily seek out this, these sessions, this help, this, this support that's in place, okay? You don't have to be feeling down in the trenches. Um, and so on. This is a support network that if you just need someone to voice an opinion to, to speak to, uh, there's a great resource available. So we're really excited about Max coming on board this year. 
Uh, we talked massively and for a long time, so I'm not going to go into depth on it in terms of the importance of the mental aspect. And it's important to, rem to remind you guys that you are young people, you know. The football schedule is, you know, pretty intense. You're here because you love football and you want to achieve something within that. But at the same time, you're allowed to be young people, you know, to enjoy, um, you know, spending time with friends. Um, there's a pressure that comes with a lot of you. No doubt you were big news in your towns or wherever you came from about coming here. And you want to pay them people back that have supported you and provided for you with results and, you know, doing something with this opportunity. But that can also be bring with it some pressure uh, that's not your fault, okay? And, and so, um, like I said, you'll have a massive support network that goes from the staff that are sat in the front rows, your coaching staff, the support staff, if any, Melina, Nicola, Amelia are all good resources as well to speak with, as well as, you know, various other people around the club. But Max will be here, so the important thing will be coming in once a month to provide uh, scheduled uh, sessions, okay? But he is available um, for individual uh, sessions also throughout. So really, really important. I think, again, one of the reasons we've been so successful is because we've been able to get ahead of the crowd in many aspects in terms of forward thinking with people like this. Um, and we're really excited to see what this is going to bring and the support it's going to provide to you guys. So uh, please, you know, feel free to take advantage of it. Again, in your brochures, you'll all have Max's details. Um, which I've mistakenly printed the wrong number on, so I apologise for that, but we can connect you with him, and, uh, and yeah, Max is a great guy, so he'll, he'll do you world of good. Lots of you guys um, already carried out your fitness testing again, you know, so this presentation was set for, for the 1st of September, okay, but, um, you know, Athlete for Performance will be, be coming in three more times, okay, to, to track our non-competitive squads, okay, so you guys can see um, the evolution physically over the season, you know, to see if you're improving, if you're having any weaknesses, and also the main thing, um, the info which it gives to people like Ryan Bowen, okay, is for helping if any of you guys do unfortunately pick up injuries during the year, that we've got some data and things to base on your return to play, okay? So the most important thing all the time is being available for the maximum amount of training sessions and the maximum amount of games, okay? Naturally, the more that you're playing and the more that you're on the field, the more chance you have of doing something that you want to do, which is obviously playing more minutes, performing better, um, and being a better football player, okay? You know, so a huge importance that we give things is on injury prevention, okay? Trying to predict when there could be injuries, and if you are unfortunate to pick up any kind of muscle injury, impact injury, helping make sure that you're at the right point to return to play, okay? Because you know, Ryan can tell you if you're coming back too soon, the natural thing that's going to happen is you're going to break down and, and get injured again, you know? So you should get your reports. Um, I believe it was in 10 days maximum. Um, you'll have a copy of that, okay? Be sent to your families as well. Um, then you'll have testing again before Christmas and two times after the, the break um, for, for the winter, okay? So uh, some fantastic equipment that, you know, Matt came over with and I'm um, really excited to see the, see the data and um, see where every player's at. So yeah, as we said, guys, new season, new goals, new players, uh, and new challenges, okay? So hopefully, you know, speaking about this today will get you excited for what's ahead. Um, famous quote of George's, you know, George, I don't know if you want to go into this, but, he, you know, he always said since, since I've arrived, treat every day like an interview, okay? Approach every day for what it's worth, try to get the most out of it, um, and like I said, always present yourself in the best possible light. George, I don't know if you want to talk on that. Or no, I think, you know, and um, it, it's a massive part, and it's a big challenge for you guys as well, you know, from the, the old school, you know, your Beeries, Ryan's, myself, people that came through the, the last generation of football, you know, it was a lot stricter on us, okay, and it was, um, you couldn't turn up, you know, you see Mbappe turn up the hat on backwards, and, and Neymar, and all these guys that are, I'm sure you guys follow and think are, are super cool, you know, be humble, we said that before, okay, think about your image and how you look, you know, when I say treat every day like an interview, you know, that means by being the best prepared for it, you know, if you had the biggest, if you were playing for Manchester United tomorrow in a, in a trial game, you wouldn't go to bed at 4 a.m. You know, you'd get a good dinner, you'd get hydrated, and you'd go to bed nice and early. You know, you'd wake up on time, you'd stretch before you went to the training session. You'd turn up in a tracksuit that was presentable, okay? You know, you wouldn't have a beanie on, you wouldn't have these big headphones on, sunglasses, something like that, okay? So every day should be the same here. You know, if you want your coaches to, to notice you and respect you, um, that's the way you should carry yourself. Again, you know, for me, Things that are free is your fitness, okay? If you're not the fastest player in your team, there's not a great deal you can do to change that, okay? Um, you know, we have our speed and where we're at, okay? If you're, unfortunately, a few kgs overweight, that's something that you can completely control, okay? So that depends on you um, and your attitude, okay? You know, so those are two things that no one can affect. You know, you, some people like say, oh, you know, they don't ever pass me the ball, they don't do this, you know, I didn't score this goal, didn't do that. They're all things, like James spoke about before, things that we can't control, okay? Things like your fitness and your attitude, they're two fundamentals that come from within inside ourselves, okay, and having 
self-discipline and, and sacrifice to get where we want to get to, you know? So it is my, my favorite saying. And, and my other one, just to throw it out there because James couldn't spell it to, to get it in the, in the presentation. Okay, but no matter how hard we all think we're working, and myself included, there's always someone working twice as hard as you, okay? And that, that's a mindset I wake up, a mantra I have every day, that no matter how hard, how much graph we think we're putting in, there's someone somewhere doing twice as much as you, you know, trying to get even further ahead than you are, okay? So sometimes when you feel like quitting, when you feel like not moving on, remember that if I quit now, that means someone's doing three times as much as me, okay? You know, so we always need to push ourselves to the absolute limit and give the best that we can to make ourselves proud first and foremost, our families and all the people at home supporting us. So here's a few things that are kind of non-negotiables, okay? Uh, arriving on time. Uh, on time is late, okay? So always getting there early, um, you know, and, and always being punctual, okay? These are things that are simple, or you know, they might sound simple, but you won't believe how many times they come into the equation, especially if we're having review meetings and, and things of that nature. Like we said, it's a long season, so doing that over a long period of time is, is very, very important, okay? Equipment, bringing the proper equipment, um, being prepared, appearance um, and obviously absences in terms of uh, you know communicating that effectively with um, your coach and staff that's one of the things I want to touch on again it's a communication thing that for many of you if you've been sick in the past or if you've not been able to go to train or whatever the case may be you've not had to worry about okay mom and dad handles handles it um, you know they tell your coach and everything's good okay when you train in a full-time environment like this communication is key okay between you and your coach and staff so communicating um, you know, if it's an injury, the severity of the injury, how you're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis, just because I text the coach on a Monday doesn't mean I can turn up on, on Wednesday without communicating. And these guys go into extreme detail when it comes to the planning of sessions, and that means that you need to uh, communicate with them, right, I think I'm going to be able to do half a session tomorrow. Or I spoke with a physio, who again will be starting uh, next Monday, just so you guys are aware, um, and he says I can return to play on this date and so on, okay? So communication is key in that aspect. Um, and we've talked about a lo lot of the other aspects anyway, so uh, we're not going to them again. A little bit, um, again, uh, these are some of the things that you've got to be prepared to sacrifice when you're looking at the modern day footballer, okay? Social events, you've got to be able to deal with rejection, injuries. Um, I would say your reaction mirrors you as a person, okay? So how do you deal with these things when they get sent your way? Because, you know, a lot of what we've talked about is very positive uh, today. But there's going to be times throughout the season where things do come into the equation that aren't necessarily great, okay? Like we said, a few of the things on there, coaching decisions, rejection, homesickness, rejection. Um, and it's about how you deal with these things in order to uh, show yourself in the best possible light, okay? And, and like we said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So um, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that use this opportunity or come to the academy and two, three years later call me and George up and say, you know, this has happened. I'm thinking, you know, is there a potential opportunity in the first team or the senior teams and so on? And these things stick out, okay? Um, and then there's obviously the rewards of that, okay, which is the very tip of the iceberg. You don't see necessarily all these things on a daily basis, but these are the, the rewards of that, you know. It's posting on your, your social media to show people how well you're doing. It's going on to opportunities. It's promotions with senior teams. It's the photo and media, the trials, the awards, and, and all that good stuff. But without any of that stuff that's under the water that nobody will see, okay, nobody uh, takes into account, um, none of that's possible. So, mm, I think there's lots of points on there, and obviously a graphic that we're, we're used to seeing now as well, but the one that sticks out is, is homesickness. Okay, if you get homesick, don't be alarmed by it, don't be disappointed, okay, it's, it's completely normal, okay, you know, I moved away from home when I was 14, 15, and there was days where, you know, I'd phone my mum up crying, I want to come back home, you know, the, the cooking's rubbish here, you know, I have to force my own clothes, etc. okay, so don't get disheartened with that, remember that every day is a new day, okay, you know, we had um, Harry on the TV show last year, you know, one of our youngest players here at, at the academy, and it was just so inspiring to see him talk how he deals with it. You know, he said, I'm here for a purpose, I'm here for a reason. If I get homesickness, yeah, I do. You know, I phone my mum, phone my dad, I have a chat, you know, I get back to training, that's what I do, you know. So reach out to people, whether that's your teammates, you know, whether that's your coaches, whether that's the support staff that you have, and even further that's Max, okay, and speak to your families and talk about it openly. Don't bottle things up, okay? If we know about a problem, um, and, a, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved, you know, so make sure that you're, you're speaking because you are going to go, everyone sat here, you know, there's coaches live away from home as well. Everyone during, at some point during this year is going to be homesick, okay? So all I'd say is it's a natural part of this process um, and don't feel like you're alone in that. Yeah, so expectations of an SCMC player. Again, we've touched on a lot of this, guys. So the big one for me is, is respect, okay? 
uh, the comfort that, that you know, starts. I remember George's dad always saying that starts at the people that you meet at the entrance to the, to the stadium. That means the cleaners that will come and clean your rooms. That means the people that you meet in the public and, and so on, okay? You, you're representing this club, but you're also representing yourself, okay? Your families have, have made a sacrifice in order for you to be here, uh, and you need to repay that by, by treating this opportunity uh, or, or giving it the respect that it deserves. And that goes to the staff, okay? Like I said, there's going to be times that I'm sure you're not going to see eye to eye with, with your coaching staff or, or various members around the club, but we are people, okay? And that's, you know, when things aren't going bad, it's important to remember that. Let's hope they don't. Um, your teammates, that's the biggest one for me as well, okay? If you've got a bad attitude in training or you're bringing the session down because of your attitude, you are doing your teammates and your friends and your peers a disservice, okay? Um, because everyone's here to get better every single day. And that also means encouraging players when they are down, when they are homesick, when they're facing different challenges and trying to be the best teammate you can be, okay? So there's a few things up there. Uh, respect just being one and being coachable, okay? It seems so simple. Um, but like I said, when it comes to those conversations that myself and George have with players that are looking to get involved, looking to come back year upon year, it's a case of, you know, what was that player like? How was he to work with? Uh, and you often find the players that do the best, it, you know, um, <laughs> can't say Cameron again because I mentioned him about three times and people are going to think there's something going on there. But uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, we, you often find the people that do the best are often the people that take these things that are respectful, that are punctual, that are on time and also good teammates and good people. I think as well, you know, there's a lot of, lot of things on there and in there, they're just words. You know, now it's kind of when you have to, you know, walk the walk. You know, we've had conversations with families, you know, we've had Zoom calls, we've seen people start training now. There, there's lots of things on there, but it's what do they mean to you, okay? And what do they mean to your value system and how are you going to carry that out, you know? So really, it's very easy for us to sit here, have a, have a nice presentation, talk about a lot of nice things. But, you know, for me, we started three days ago, but everything we've discussed here starts from now, you know, and how you want to carry yourself, how you want to be a good teammate, you know, what's a good teammate, it's very open-ended, you know, so for me, I'm excited to see how everyone takes that on board, okay, and, and I'm hoping for an absolutely fantastic season. So yeah, guys, just wrapping up, okay, uh, be on time, be a good teammate, respect the rules, okay, for a lot of you, I know the, the new implemented rules within the accommodations and things like that, um, you know, they, you know they're, they're there for the, for the best for you, okay? Um, you might not agree with them, but you're here to play football like, like we've said. Uh, that should always be your primary focus here. Uh, respect the people, you know, the monitors are maybe a bit younger, they're of a similar age to many of you, but respect them and give them the, the respect that they deserve, okay? Go to class. We've mentioned there we're going to have a no-tolerance policy for players that are not attending Spanish class or not keeping up with, um, you know, whether it's high school diplomas, collegiate classes, whatever the case may be, it's an important factor of the program. Um, and yeah, go into it, demand the most out of yourselves and your teammates, but mo most importantly, enjoy the experience, okay? Because, you know, um, the end of last season seemed like it was yesterday, okay? And I remember giving this presentation with George um, at the beginning of the season and, and having those conversations at the end with people that were you know, nearly in tears when they're speaking to me about the experience that they've had here. You will make friends for life. It might seem again corny, um, but the experience when you look back on it will be, for some of you, the best experience of your life, the best football experience of your life and so on. So it's important to remember that and to try and to appreciate that every single day. And like I said, I'm just hoping and we're, we're really, really, really excited for this year because we think it's got the potential to be the best yet. Okay, so... Yeah, this is one of my cheesy <laughs> quotes. This is the last one, guys. If you think the cost of winning is high, just wait until you get the bill for regret, okay? So don't be the one that regrets this opportunity at the end, not giving it everything they had, going home for a disciplinary issue or anything like that, okay? Enjoy it, take it for what it's worth, uh, and enjoy every second of it. And if you do get a big bill, send it to James Dawes. <laughs> Thank you guys.